Sometimes you ask yourself, how can I get better at defending an FC24? The answer is simple, jockey. Visit u 7 bycom and get some cheap, safe, and reliable FC coins and get yourself Team of the Year the 97 overpowered Erling Haaland. Use the discount code DRFC for 6% off. Link in the description. Let's go all the way back to the basics of jockey and some stuffs you don't know. Drop that like button and we start. What is jockey exactly? But before we rush on that, we have three defending styles in FC24, and the first is the legacy defending. The simple and less effective defending style on the game. Legacy defending consists of that automatic press style what we call contain. The automatic contain you press and hold X or A on your controller. Here you can even press it with the sprint button. This defender with the cursor, this small triangle on top of your defender, shows the defender you're controlling, and when you press and hold X, the contain button, this defender will start running towards this player with the ball. The defender is locked on this player with the ball. And even if you try to push the left analog to any direction, it will have no any effect on your defender. This legacy contain is aggressive. The defender overcommits and runs toward this player with the ball and even dispossess him. This defending style is bad because highly skilled opponents can easy beat this defender with simple skill moves and tricks. And it's only used when playing offline modes. So I don't recommend you to use this defending style. You can use it only if you play offline modes and it's just for fun on your side. But if you want to defend well on the game either offline and online, then you can consider this second defending style. The tactical defending. The only similarity with legacy defending is the contain. Tactical defending contain it's almost the same as that of legacy defending, where you press and hold X, here your player runs to press that ball holder. But the only difference is that aggressiveness. Tactical defending the defender leaves that 2 to 3 yards away from that player with the ball. Even if you push the left analog towards that player with the ball, as long as you're still holding the contain button, this defender will not commit towards this ball holder. So it's somehow better than legacy contain, because here it's difficult to beat your defender with easy skills or tricks. But still I don't recommend you to use the contain button while defending. Contain your defender locks towards that ball holder, and here it's easier to pull out your defenders out of positions, because defenders only follows the ball holder and they don't cover passing lanes or open spaces. So don't use contain while defending. The last defending style is the advanced defending. This was introduced this season. Advanced defending has no contain. There's no automatic defending, and that's why it's called advanced defending. Not only that, but the way you win the ball from the opponent is somehow complicated, and so far by now, I only recommend you to use the tactical defending style. Still, we haven't answered our question. What is jockey? Here this defender is in a normal standing posture, standing straight with a flat feet. Now see what happens if this defender is in a jockey motion. He bends his knees keeping low center of gravity, standing on his toes and ready for action. See what happens if you defend without jockey, this defender will move fast. And if you want to increase his speed you can press the sprint button, moves fast meaning he can cover a lot of ground in less time. Not only that, but if you move away from the ball holder, this defender faces away from the ball. The advantage of this, it helps a lot when chasing the opponent running player, where you can even sprint at full speed and match the opponent's moving speed. So the main purpose of this is to cover or close up space, and sometimes when defending aggressive. The disadvantages, here this defender can't react to opponent's change of direction, and it's easier for the opponent to beat this defender. Now see what happens when you jockey with this defender. First of all, this defender locks on the ball. He always faces the direction of the ball. And even if you move away, this defender will always keep his body position facing the ball. And here it's easier to react to the opponent's actions when defending. We have two jockey styles. And the first is the slow jockey, where you press and hold L2 or LT on your controller and move your left analog to any direction necessary. This defender moves but takes little small steps just to cover less ground. Slow jockey we use it in two main ways. First is to hold ground. Most especially when defending one-on-one -on -one against the opponent's player. If your defender is in front, here you can move slow using the slow jockey and maintain the defender's ground. Another way is to stabilize your defender. If you find yourself sprinting at full speed with your defender, and you want to slow down but in a reactive way without losing control and momentum of your defender. Here you just press the L2 to stabilize this defender. Your defender slows down, but still can react to opponent's actions. Though slow jockey is good but only if you're close to the opponent's player. But if you're too far away, it's very difficult to cover space and mirror the opponent's movements, for example like when he's dribbling. 
And that's you have to sometimes consider this second jockey style. The speed jockey. Here you press both the L2 plus R2 or LT plus RT. Your defender moves a little bit faster than the slow jockey, but the speed is not equivalent to sprinting. We can also use this jockey type in two effective ways. One, approaching the opponent's player. The reason, fast jockey, you have that control over your defender because he moves very fast but with control. Here he can react to any change of direction or action the opponent attempts. Reaction means that even if you move in a wrong direction holding the speed jockey, you can still change and move to the right direction without wasting time and losing position. Another important thing is that, when you speed jockey and approach the opponent's player, your defender can automatically win the ball without you pressing the tackling button. Another way is to cut passing lanes. The speed jockey helps a lot here because this ball receiver is moving and changing directions. Then to react and cut that pass effectively, you have to use speed jockey. But sometimes you can use sprint to cut that pass. It depends on the distance from your defender to that passing lane. And to reach in time, sometimes you have to sprint. We have two types of jockey. And let's begin with the assisted jockey type. This type, the game or AI, controls the speed of your defender and sometimes direction. But I haven't figured out how the direction is assisted. So when you jockey, for example here I'm jockeying in circles and around this player with the ball, the game slows down my defender. If I'm moving away from this player, let's say I'm jockeying in a clockwise motion, the game will slow down my defender at this point, just to make sure I don't lose this one-on-one -on -one defense positioning. Then if I'm moving anti-clockwise, the game will slow down my defender at this point. And that's what they mean when saying the speed is assisted. The manual jockey, here everything you do it by yourself, you control speed and direction, meaning here it's very easy to drag away your defender. Here you're on your own, but still you can control the speed if you use the slow jockey style sometimes and stabilize your defender or hold ground. So what type of jockey is recommended? Assisted jockey is only used on offline modes. Online you will use manual by default. So I personally recommend you to use that manual jockey because defending is an art. I'm not against other controller configurations, but if you wish to improve your game, then you have to use the classic controller settings. All the tutorial we make the inputs are based on classic settings. We're sprinting you press or two. Our one is the finesse and also second man contain. Circle is the shot button and also tackle. Square is cross which we call the lob pass and also the slide tackle. And I think those are the basics you need to know about classic. I know at first it's very difficult to use, but stick with it. So what is defending one-on-one -on -one exactly? It's a defensive action, where you approach the opponent's ball holder and challenge for the ball. So in brief, it's about applying pressure to the player with the ball. Before we move any further forward, why do we defend one-on-one? -on -one? That moment you approach that ball holder and apply pressure. We have three reasons for that. One, it's by purpose. Sometimes the situations happens when you have to defend one-on-one -on -one and stop the opponent's player from progressing forward or even win the ball. This situation you have no choice but to defend that way. After you fail, the opponent can get through and punish you. And mostly this happens around or inside your box. For example, here the opponent passes the ball to his striker inside my box as I select my center back. The situation here, I have to defend this player one-on-one -on -one purposely, meaning here I have no choice but to do it. Because if it happens and I screw up, the opponent can get through and even score. So I defend well and dispossess the opponent. Another reason is by choice. Sometimes we defend one-on-one -on -one just by choosing to do it. It's not by purpose. Like even if we don't do it or screw up, it's not punishable. This normally happens high up the pitch and many times in the opponent's half. For example here, the opponent has the ball around the wide central area of the pitch. As you see, I have selected my fullback. So here the opponent has this open pass, but instead of cutting this pass, I decide to press this ball holder. Here it's not by purpose to do it because of this open pass. The opponent can initiate a pass and move and get in behind. But I see the opportunity to win the ball because of the opponent's tendencies, which is a different topic from this. So I choose to defend one-on-one -on -one rather than cutting this pass. So it paid off ending up winning the ball. The last reason is to just delay the opponent. Sometimes the opponent can be with multiple options like space and open passes. Here it's not by purpose to defend one-on-one. -on -one. But the opponent himself is ignoring other options and directly trying to beat your defender. But the odds is against you because he has many options he can use. So here you're choosing to defend one-on-one -on -one, and it's also by purpose to do it. Defending one-on-one -on -one begins with observation. This is so important. 
you have to keep your eyes on the opponent's ball holder. I know some players are used to always look at their defenders, which is okay in some cases like when you want a player switch and other defensive actions. But if you're defending one-on-one, -on -one, your eyes should always be locked at this player with the ball. Here you can observe and understand how the opponent is dribbling, to which direction is facing and other actions. Then next is the defender positioning. First of all, you have to position your defender in the opponent's way or path towards your goal. You have to vision a line from the opponent's player towards your goal. And so here you can defend one-on-one -on -one with a great basic defense position. You have to develop this habit and make it your second nature. Defending like this, you always have that feeling how the opponent is dribbling towards your goal and most especially how he's positioning this ball holder. Next is to leave that two to three yard distance from the ball holder. The most common mistake beginners make is over committing and move too close to this player with the ball. Here it's very easy to beat this defender just by using simple tricks like the pass and move or any dribbling trick like the ball roll and other simple skill moves. But when you leave that 2-3 to three yards, here it's very difficult for the opponent to beat this defender. To be successful, the opponent have to attempt advanced stuffs or even mind games. And again, don't be too far away from this ball holder. Here you're giving too much space. The opponent will have time to chain tricks and leave your defender behind. So always be close to a distance of 2-3 to three yards. Third is the defender movement. We all know that you move your defender using the left analog right. We need to jockey, remember. So the first way to move your defender is to speed jockey. We speed jockey when defending one-on-one -on -one to approach that ball holder. The main reason is that reaction. Here you cover a lot of ground in a reactive way. When you speed jockey, your defender reacts very well and it's very easy to mirror the opponent's movements. Here this defender changes directions very easily and quick. Next is to hold your ground. Sometimes, especially when you're too close to the opponent's ball holder. Here, it's very easy to overcommit and drag away your defender when using the speed jockey or sprint. But when you slow down your movements using the slow jockey, here the defender react and importantly keeping his position. Next is to stabilize. When defending one-on-one, -on -one, you have to mirror the opponent's movements. And as you understand, when dribbling, no one can keep a stable speed. They always slow down or increase the speed. So sometimes you find yourself sprinting at full speed with your defender chasing down the opponent's player. But if the opponent is good, he will try and slow down and sometimes look for other options. Here is the defender you have to slow down, but in a reactive way. And so using the L2, the slow jockey. You can slow down your defender, but still in a way that he can react to opponent's actions. When defending one-on-one, -on -one, you have to mix up the jockey system. As I said, the opponent is always changing directions. And to mirror his movements, you have to move your defender, but in a reactive way to match the opponent's actions. And that's why you have to learn how to mix up the jockey system. So here are some examples showing how the jockey system is used effective when mixing these control movements. Here the opponent passed to his winger. He has this big space. So I hold the sprint button because I expect him to sprint and exploit this space. And it's also the defense purpose I have to fulfill at the moment. I sprint for a while and anticipate him to slow down and change direction. So I press L2 to stabilize my fullback, but I'm wrong at this moment because the opponent is just running towards the byline. So I release the jockey button, hold sprint again, and run to block his path towards my goal. The opponent realizes he can't force his way through the byline, so he slows down, and I also press L2 to stabilize my defender. Here I switch away from this one-on-one -on -one because I anticipate the opponent passing to this player inside the box, but I see the opponent again dribbling towards the byline, so I switch back to this fullback. Hold both the L2 and R2 for speed jockey. I approach this player defending basically and win the ball. Last example. The opponent passed the ball to his winger. I also select my center back. As we said approaching you press the speed jockey. I approach but not over committing because the opponent can use the pass and move trick and get in behind. So here I use the slow jockey to hold my ground. The opponent tried to dribble pass through my defender and I win the ball. Next is to tackle. Tackling is that action when your defender lounges on your command and knock the ball away from the ball holder's feet. How to tackle basically. 1. You have to get close to the ball. Don't make this mistake of tackling when you're not near that player with the ball. It doesn't make sense. So get close, and this increases the chances of winning the ball. You have to be observant. Ball contact concept is so crucial when learning how to tackle. Long ball contact is when the opponent's player knocks that ball and it moves to at least 2-3 to three yards away from him. Here you have the opportunity to tackle because he's not controlling the ball during this moment. The player is most likely to make a long ball contact. 1. When he's sprinting. This is the common way because the opponent is moving fast and to do it his player has to knock that ball a distance away from his feet. Next is after performing any skill move. 
After performing that skill, that moment the opponent's player is not controlling the ball, and that's the moment you step in and challenge for the ball. Next thing to observe is dribbling. If he is dribbling with the ball open, when the ball is in between your defender and the opponent's player, that's the moment you step in and tackle the ball. Following the tackling basics when defending one-on-one, -on -one, the pitch area also matters. Basically, when defending in or around your box, before tackling the opponent's ball holder after making sure you're close, you have to watch out for ball contacts and reckless dribbling, and me personally, I tend to be very patient. But high up the pitch, as soon as I get close to the opponent's player, I don't always mind about the ball contact. As soon as the opponent dribbles recklessly, I will press the tackle button. Because here mistiming of tackles is not highly punishable than in or around your box. So high up the pitch it's okay to be somehow aggressive, but around your box, be more disciplined and defend one-on-one -on -one basically. Good enough we have a dedicated video about tackling. It covers all concepts of tackling and stuffs about advanced defending whether you should use it or not. So check it out link in the description. Let's have some examples and see how I defend one-on-one -on -one using the basic way. So here the opponent is sprinting down the wing and I'm also controlling my fullback. I vision this line towards my goal. I sprint diagonally like this and block that path, but the opponent senses that and slows down, which means he's planning to change the direction. I press the L2 to stabilize. The opponent changes direction and attempts to drive inside, visioning this line. I hold speed jockey and approach this player blocking that path. Speed jockey, you move your defender fast in a reactive way. So here as I attempt to get close, the opponent dribbles safely and turn away. I'm not spamming the tackling button even though I'm close because the opponent is not dribbling openly and also not making long ball contacts. But as soon as the opponent loses his patience and tries to force this one-on-one -on -one despite having other options to take, he opens and face my player. So here the ball is in between my defender and his player. I approach using the speed jockey. Remember it's high up the pitch. Mistiming of tackles is less risky. I press the tackling button and win the ball. Another example, here I loose the ball in my half. The first thing I do I vision the opponent's path towards my goal. I also sprint to block that path matching his speed. I later on press L2 to stabilize because I don't want to overcommit to this side, and I expect the opponent to change directions. Here I'm very patient waiting for the opponent to make some mistakes because it's around my box. As soon as he performs the reverse elastico, his player makes that long ball contact. That's the moment I step in and press the tackle button and win the ball back. Cutting passing lanes is one of the most crucial defense skill you have to master in this game. Because the opponent can't just be dribbling every time, he has to pass and it's the most effective way to attack. Because passing the ball is the quickest way to get the ball forward. We have different ways to cut passing lanes due to the fact that we have two types of passing options, the direct pass and the through pass. So let's begin with cutting direct passes. A direct pass is directed at the feet of the ball receiver. So to cut a short pass, you have to position this defender near this ball receiver, three to four feet away. Here your player can intercept this pass with higher chances of winning the ball safely. But before that, it's all about vision. The direction the opponent's ball holder is facing, that's where is most likely to pass the ball to. For example here, the opponent's player is facing this direction, so there's 90% chances that he has to pass the ball to this open pass lane. Here I don't expect the opponent to pass to this player because the lane is blocked, or these two players because this ball holder is not facing towards that direction. But right now I'm controlling this defender. So if I want to block this pass, this is not the defender I should be using. Because by the time I reach this passing lane I will be late. And that's why player switching is so crucial to master the art of interception. You have to switch the right players and right positions to defend. So before we continue let's first cover player switching quickly. Player switching, this player with the cursor, this small triangle on top of your defender, it can be red or blue or any other color, indicates the player you're controlling that moment. Let's first have the player switching settings quickly. Auto switch I personally use only on loose balls, but you can use only on air balls. Move assistance use low, then right stick switch use classic. The reference use player relative because it's the most effective way to switch. Right stick switch sensitivity use 6, next player switching use closest to ball and lastly switch off icon switching. Beginning with the quick switch, the L1 or LB switch, this type of switch the command to switch a player is manual, but the selection is automatic, meaning when you press L1 to select a defender, but the game decides the player to be selected. And most of the times a player closest to the ball is selected. So the quick switch switches to the nearby defender around the ball. As the beginner you can set on the next player indicator. Here it shows this faded icon. 
indicates the player who will be selected to when you press L1. But me personally, I don't like it because I'm not used to it. For example here, the opponent passes the ball to his player Jude Bellingham. But me at the moment am controlling this defender who is not in a position to defend this player. But I see this faded icon on top of one of my players, and we said it shows the player to be selected if I press L1. So I press it, and the defender is selected, I defend one-on-one, -on -one and win the ball as easy as that. But as we have said, don't expect the opponent to always pass the ball to the player close to his ball holder. You have to consider dealing with long direct passes too. An L1 switch can't select a defender distant from the ball. An L1 switch it's all about gambling. I personally don't trust it because it's not consistent. For example here, I'm controlling this defender. The opponent is moving to this direction trying to find an open lane to get the ball to his strikers. So here I'm also very keen trying to block those passing lanes. I use the L1 switch and the game selects this defender for me in a good position to block passing lane to the opponent striker. So even though the game selected this player by coincidence, according to L1 logic, it's supposed to select defenders near the ball and I think this defender is near the ball but he's not switched to. I manage to defend the situation and intercept the ball. But that means it's not consistent. That's why you have to consider the second switching type, the right analog switch. Here initiating a player switch command is also manual but also player selection is manual, giving you more control whereby you can select any player of your choice at any given moment. Right stick switch this player with the triangle icon is the center of the switch. Then if you want to select any defender of your choice, for example this defender, flick the right analog towards the direction of that player, and boom, the player is selected, then you can move him and perform the defense purpose. Right stick switch gives you more control. For example here, the opponent is facing this direction, which means he's most likely to pass to this player or this player forward. Later on, we shall have a video on how to understand which option to defend regardless of the opponent's actions. I'm controlling this defender, but I want to block this pass to this striker, and so I have to use the center back. But if I use the L1 switch, the game will select one of these players because they are close to the ball holder. The option is right analog switch. I imagine a clock logic. This defender with the cursor is the center. This center back I want to select is slightly above 9 o'clock, so I flick the analog towards that direction. I control my defender and intercept the ball as simple as that. So back to cutting direct passing lane. At first we talked about vision, then second defender positioning. The third step is defender movement, and that's the speed jockey. We normally use the speed jockey to cut passing lanes because here we can cover a lot of ground in a reactive way, positioning this defender in the passing lane without moving out of position. But it all depends on the distance of this defender in the passing lane. Sometimes the distance will be somehow distant or big, and using the speed jockey your defender will be late and unable to intercept the ball, and that's when you use the sprint button. Sprint and cover that distance quick and intercept the ball. Another passing option is the through pass. This pass is directed into the space. This pass normally happens when the opponent's ball receiver is running forward. Here the direct pass is not the best option, so the opponent has to use the through pass. So here is the basic way to defend through balls. The first thing is quick reaction. After realizing the opponent has a player running forward towards your back four defenders, here you have to react quick enough. And that takes us to the next step, player switching. You have to select a defender in a position to intercept that pass. For example here, as I attempt to intercept the short pass, the opponent sends his player forward as you can see his body language. But here I'm using this fullback and there's no need to switch to another defender because I'm using the right defender. The fullback because the pass scenario is also on the wing and I ended up intercepting the ball. But let's have another example to explain that more. Here the opponent beats my fullback. And here I see this player running forward. Here I can't use this very fullback to defend this through pass opportunity because this running player is moving through the middle area and I have a defender in that department. So I quickly switch to this center back using the right analog switch and in the end I ended up intercepting the pass. So after the player switch the next step is to defend the through pass. How? You have to position your defender 2 to 3 yards in front of this running player. You react quick enough, sprint backwards, and defend this space in front of the ball receiver. As we know the through pass is directed into the space, then that's why we have to first run back and leave that space. And if the opponent attempts the through pass, then you can intercept the ball. But we have some good players who instead use the direct pass if the opponent is cutting the through pass. Then that's when you also, as the defender, use the speed jockey and move close to this ball receiver and also be in a position to defend the through pass and the direct pass at the same time. To master the art of interception, you have to consider this important tip, the quickness at player switching. 
you have to be in a right moment and in a right time to position your defender well and intercept, which means you have to switch your players very quick and accurately. So that's why you have to master the right analog switch. To practice the right analog switch, you do it in a kickoff match of two players. Give the ball to the opposition team, and your main aim is to just switch using the right analog switch to any player of your choice. It's so boring, but trust me, it's worth your time. Keeping the team shape it means defending in a way that every player on the pitch is in his or her position according to the formation you're using. For example, me, I use 4-4-2. I defend making sure that my back four are always in their positions, the full backs defending the wide area, as well as the two center backs are defending the middle area. Then the two midfielders the same story. Let's first look at the disadvantages of defending with a disorganized defense shape. The number one disadvantage is too much open spaces in your defense. Here the opponent will have many open passing options and also spaces to take advantage against you. When one defender is out of his position, he leaves space, and this triggers the opponent's AI player to exploit that space, creating that deadly passing opportunity, and good opponents will punish you for that mistake. So let's see how you can maintain the defense shape solid and organized. Number one is to stop dragging players out of their defense positions. When defending, you have to make sure that every defender defends according to his position of the formation, use, and most especially the back four. Don't use a center back to defend in a midfield unless when it's necessary. Some players will drag this center back and use him to defend in a central area despite seeing the midfielder is available for that role. In fact, you can even drag that defender back to his position if you realize is out of position. Like here, as you see my back four is not organized because this fullback is out of position. When I see the opponent dribbling safely avoiding this pressure from this center back and controlling, and I also see my fullback running back. So before switching to this fullback, I first push this center back to his position, then I switch to the fullback and try to defend the situation. Here is the perfect example. The opponent passes to his striker and am also controlling the center back trying to defend one-on-one. -on -one. But as the opponent passes the ball to another striker, I realize that my back four is not well organized. So before switching to this center back and defend one-on-one -on -one against the striker, I first run back with this defender and drag him manually to his position. Then I switch to this center back and defend the situation ending up winning the ball back. Another way to maintain the team shape is to avoid exchanging defenders to different positions. If your defense shape for example back four, let me say you have Sergio Ramos and VVD. Don't move VVD from his side to defend on the side of Ramos unless it's necessary. You have to make sure that every defender defends the ball in his team formation position. And to achieve this, you have to master player switching. We have a video explaining that concept well. Check the link in the description. So if the opponent is on the wing and you're defending using your fullback, and the opponent attempts to recycle the ball or moving back, if you have your winger available, again, don't drag this fullback and exchange positions with this winger trying to keep the pressure on. Switch to that winger and defend with him. This means that to whatever position the ball moves to, and you have a player available, quickly switch to that player and defend. Another way to maintain the team shape organized is to defend involving everyone on the pitch. Some average players tend to ignore some players while defending for example wingers, strikers, and sometimes fullbacks. Every player on the pitch has a defense purpose as we shall see in the next upcoming video. So try to give the opponent hard time while defending by involving every single player. Here is a simple hack I use while defending. This happens when the opponent has the ball in the middle. So here try to always involve your fullbacks and defend rather than rushing to select your center backs. Here you're giving your center backs freedom to remain in their respective positions. Me, I would rather force the opponent to attack through the wing than in the middle. Like in this quick example, the opponent has this striker drifting wide towards this space. Even though I'm controlling this center back early enough and I can intercept this pass immediately. But I have a feeling that this striker will use his body and shield off my defender and get him behind. So I quickly select this fullback using the right analog switch. Then I move in towards this space and I tackle winning the ball. Another way to maintain the team shape is to be careful while using the second man press. The second man press is a very powerful tool while defending, but if used wrongly it can disorganize your defense shape by dragging a defender out of position if you're not observant enough. We shall have a tutorial about the second man press and how to use it. Here is an example of the opponent using the second man press wrongly. First of all, he's controlling this midfielder and at the same time using the second man press with this fullback. And as you see, the fullback is dragged out of position. So I pass quickly and exploit the space open by dragging the fullback out. And 
now he's controlling the fullback, but also second man pressing using this center back. I see my striker making this run to exploit the space this center back is opening. I pass quickly, get the ball to that striker, and punish the opponent. So when using the second man press, you have to be aware of the player selected. For example, when you're defending the wing and use it, but you realize it's a center back, you have to immediately release the button and defend normally. What if everything goes wrong and you accidentally or knowingly drag a defender out of his position? We all know it's very difficult to maintain that defense shape organized for the whole 90 minutes of the game. When you drag a defender out of position, don't feel low and panic seeming that the game is over. No, still you can defend even if you have dragged a defender out. You can use a player in a wrong position, but in a right moment. For example, if you drag a fullback out of position, Again, don't be like, let me chase with this very fullback because the opponent is attacking through the wing and the fullback is supposed to defend the wing. No, that is BS because this fullback is out of position and you have open space. Here we use the nearest center back, a defend the wing area for the fullback. But another big mistake average players make in this situation is to again overcommit with this center back trying to press the ball holder or covering space. When defending situations like this, don't overcommit with this center back. Your purpose is to just delay the opponent's attack and give time for your fullback to recover. But if the opponent tries to commit towards the byline, that's the moment you also commit and challenge one-on-one. -on -one. Let's have this example. I mistakenly dragged away my fullback and open up this big space, and now my back four is not organized. I see the opponent sprinting to exploit this space, and immediately I switch to my center back. So here my job is to just sprint back and delay the opponent's attack to give time for this fullback to recover. But the opponent shows me he's just sprinting towards the byline with no intentions of cutting back. And that's why I also approach approach and win the ball back. So guys, that's it. We're going to have a video on how to understand what to defend in every situation. Have you ever wondered why pro players always seem to understand what to defend in almost every situation? It's all about mastering the defense purpose concept and also being disciplined. We have four defense purpose to fulfill in order for your defense to be solid. And let's go order by order, understanding which defense purpose you should fulfill first and last. So let's begin. Now here we start, in this clip. If the opponent has the ball like here, what is the quickest way he can move forward? When we analyze the situation, what is the quickest way the opponent can get the ball forward? You guessed it right, passing the ball to this forward open player. So when defending, you have to fulfill the defense purpose according to the way the opponent can get forward quickly. And so cutting forward passes is the first defense purpose you have to fulfill first. Everyone wants to get forward as easy as possible. And the quickest way is to pass the ball forward. But if you're always cutting these forward passing options, you intercept many passes and win the ball back in that manner because a lot of average opponents will always pass the ball forward. And even if the opponent is good enough and reads the situation, he will not force this pass. But still you're giving him hard time to build up. He have to try other tricks in order for him to get forward. So prioritize forward open passes. I'm not saying that you don't deal with side passes. No. Sometimes you have to also cut side passes. But remember the dangerous options will always be that option the opponent can use to easily get forward. Now back to this clip. So now there's no forward open pass. How can the opponent get forward? As you see, dribbling and exploit the space is the only way. If there's no open passing lane forward, the opponent can decide to exploit the space in front if it's available. But here we have two spaces available, this forward space and this side space. And as you know, moving forward is the key. So closing up this forward space is our next defense purpose to fulfill. Sometimes the opponent will have that open free space towards your goal, no forward passing option but space. And so that's your defense purpose you have to fulfill. Understanding how to close your space is very simple. You just need to observe the opponent's actions. To which direction is this ball holder facing? If he's facing towards the space, then the opponent is most likely to drive towards that space. And also the actions. If he's fully committed to drive to that space, then sprint and cover that space. If the opponent tries to force through, you will win the ball. Back to the clip. Now there's no any open forward pass, no space in front, and now your defender is close to this ball holder. So here I think now many of you guessed the next defense purpose, pressure. If you have covered all the options, then that's the moment you approach this ball holder and apply pressure. Some players make a big mistake of applying pressure to the ball holder without fulfilling other defense purposes first. Here good opponents will take the advantage of the available options and beat your pressure. So to make sure you always defend with purpose, first fulfill other purposes, then you apply pressure and defend one-on-one. -on -one. 
Now after learning the basic defense purposes, let's look at the advanced way you can use them to defend. Some good opponents will always try different ways to deal with your defense actions, in way that if you cut that forward passing lane he will dribble, and if you approach to apply pressure he will move away and dodge that pressure. This is possible only if you give the opponent too much time on the ball. As the defender you have to react and defend fulfilling multiple purposes at the same time. And beginning with cutting passing lanes as the first purpose, and after you apply pressure, you can block that passing lane, then you immediately approach this ball holder and apply pressure. This is only possible if your defender is not too far away from this ball holder. Some players will see that you're cutting the forward pass, and so they take their time, and that's when you surprise by applying pressure to this ball holder. Another one is to cover the front space and then cut the open forward passing lane. Just know that when fulfilling the defense purposes, you don't stick at one purpose like covering the space. Here the opponent, if is good, he will look for other options like open passes. So after covering that space, you have to cut any forward passing lane. If the opponent is attacking with one isolated player having that space to exploit. So when you cover that space, he will be forced to turn back. In that moment, his teammates will have reached and joined that attack and he will try to use them. So after covering that space, cut that passing lane. Another one is to cover that front space and then press the ball holder. As I said, you don't stick to one purpose. If you cover that space and the opponent has no any forward open pass, then that's the moment you approach and defend one-on-one -on -one against this player with the ball. But sometimes it can be difficult to fulfill multiple purposes if the opponent is very good at reacting to your defensive moves. When you cut the pass, he dribbles. And when you approach to apply pressure, he turns away or pass to any other passing options. Dealing with such opponents, you have to consider using a power defensive tool, which enables you to fulfill multiple purposes at the same time. Second man press you hold R1 or RB. This triggers one of your AI defenders and oftenly closest to the ball to apply pressure on the opponent's ball holder. And this green icon indicates the second man press player. This second man press player will only stop pressing the ball when if you release the button, R1, he will stop and try to position himself back to his position. 2. If he runs out of stamina, if you hold the button you will see that the stamina drops. If the gauge runs out this player will stop pressing. So let's see how we can use the second man press while defending. Last time we look at the defensive purposes and how to fulfill multiple purposes. But some opponents are good at reacting. You cut the passing lane they dribble or look for other options. And if you also approach they pass the ball or turn away from that pressure. It's very possible only if you give too much freedom and time to the opponent. Like the first use of second man press is to cut passing lanes and at the same time applying pressure. So if you don't use the second man press while cutting that passing lane, then after you switch back and try to pressure, here the opponent has time to react and beat your pressure. But if you use the second man press as you cut that passing lane, the opponent if he's good will not force that pass, but still you're pressuring that player with the ball using this AI defender, and when you switch back to press manually, your player will be close to the opponent's ball holder, and he will have no time to react or do anything else. Not only switching back and press manually, sometimes the second man press can win the ball if the opponent is dribbling openly not protecting the ball. And sometimes the opponent will panic and try to force this pass. As you cut this passing option and using the second man press to apply pressure, the opponent will feel that pressure and panic. As the only way to escape this pressure situation is mind will be tricked to force the pass. The second way to use the second man press is to double press. This is a very fun way of defending. If you manage to keep your defense shape well organized, most of the times you will be able to double press. Double pressing most of the time it's in between the fullback and the winger, or the center back and fullback. And that's the reason why you have to always keep that defense shape organized. On the wing mostly you will be controlling that fullback, and second man pressure has to be the winger. Here you block the opponent's way towards your goal and defend the opponent one-on-one -on -one with that fullback also making sure that he doesn't turn away and escape the pressure, and that's why you use the second man press. This winger will apply pressure from the opposite side, as well as you also apply pressure from the front side, and the opponent will be trapped in the middle. That's what we call double pressing. The last way to use the second man press is to just keep on the pressure. Sometimes if you drag out your defender out of position accidentally, 
you can drag back that defender manually as we looked at in team shape video. But using the second man press to keep pressuring the opponent at the same time as you're positioning back this defender. Those are some way you can use the second man press. But there are some mistakes players make while defending using this tool. And let's look at the major one. The main mistake players make while using the second man press is not being aware of the defender selected. Here the game sometimes will select the wrong player for you. And this player will move out of his position to press the ball holder. And you will drag that defender out of position unknowingly. And you concede that goal without even understanding what the cause was. Recently, I have been not using the second man icon, the faded icon which appear on top of one of your players, indicating the player to be selected if you press L1 to switch. But it also indicates the second man press player. If you press R1, the player with that cursor will second man press the opponent's ball holder. So from today, I recommend you guys to turn it on because it helps a lot when second man pressing. Such that if you want to use the second man press, you will understand which player will be triggered to press. And this helps you to avoid such mistakes. But sometimes as the game moves very fast, it's very difficult to stay focused and observe the defender with the second man icon. And some of you guys like me sometimes use the second man press unconsciously. So if the game selects a wrong player for you, immediately release the button and defend normally and avoid dragging that player out of his position. So guys, that's it for today. It will take you some time to get used at using these defensive tools. Make sure to practice them. Thanks for watching.